Hello everyone, I am Veos, and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video. Now, I was, I, I was watching one of my favorite YouTubers, Shadow Zone, and he was reinventing the wheel, basically, for the new Parallax mod, to try to make a rover or vehicle to get over all the obstacles that the Parallax mod would add on moons and planets. So I thought to myself, huh, I could do that. Now I knew that there were a couple other channels that also tried to tackle this Parallax mod challenge. You have the TD channel. He tried to build his own little thing. Pretty cool channel. Definitely go over there and give him some love. You also have the legendary Matt's channel. He also tried to tackle it. He made kind of a stock suspension system on his little rover. Pretty cool. Check his channel out. Give him some love. I'll go ahead and put their channels or their videos in the description below. You can click on them. But anyway, now a while back I downloaded a, a mod called Parallax. It's supposed to add more detail to the ground and rocks and stuff. And if you go into the parameters file or whatever, you can actually turn on the collision boxes for all the rocks and stuff on the ground, which makes it very challenging to drive on the surface of some of these moons and planets. But I remember in the comments below on one of the videos, someone asked me to build a craft capable of traversing all of these rocks and stuff that the mod put on the moons and planets. Interestingly enough, I had already made a very large vehicle or very large rover that was inspired by the Homeworld series, Sands of Karak or something like that, where all of your vehicles were basically land ships. Big old vehicles, big old tires, real fun stuff. But anyway, I had already made something like this. The first version was very prototype, blunt, straight axle. It could get around on a smooth surface, but definitely not what Parallax or with the Parallax mod, mod installed, there's no way. The second prototype large rover that I had built was actually meant for Kerbin only, but it had a different type of frame. It had more of an A-frame to it, allowing for a higher clearance. So I took this idea of the large rover with an A-frame design, and I went to work on building a suspension for it. Now, stock suspension systems go way back. I'm like talking like way, way back. In the early days of building stock suspension, you had fuel lines, you would use ant engines to create a type of bendy parts to make the whole thing kind of bounce. Real fun stuff, but problem is, is that a lot of that wouldn't work for something on a larger scale. That video was from one of my buddies from a long time ago that I haven't seen since. Real sad, hope maybe one day he comes back, we'll see. So I had to come up with something that would be able to support a very large, heavy rover. The simple solution that I came up with was kind of like a seesaw-like design for the front and rear suspension frame. I made the middle frame of the rover more of a load-bearing frame. It wouldn't bend or contort as much as the front and back. It was to help keep the whole craft stable, but still have give when it came to being able to go over large obstacles. So I had the challenge of trying to make the chassis large but light and still have the ability to twist and bend. And it couldn't just be some weird chassis to hold kerbals. It, it had to have a purpose. It had to be useful. So I thought of it being more of an exploration type of carrier craft. It'd have the ability to refuel, it'd have the ability to store and deploy land craft with an elevator, it'd have flying craft, all that jazz. After testing it abusively on Kerbin's gravity many, 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 many times, I finally knew that it was ready for the moon. But how in the hell am I going to get this beast to the moon? It's too big for the biggest fairings. I thought about grabbing a bunch of open cargo bays and kind of surrounding it like a big giant bay, but that would have create, created way more drag. So I just went old school. Like we used to back in the days before fairings were even in, put in the game. Went straight up wings. And I knew that some of the wings were gonna create a lot of drag, especially the bottom part, but I wasn't worried about it too much because of the fact that the flight path of this thing would pretty much cut through all of the thicker up, thicker atmosphere before going into a gravity turn. At that point, the atmosphere would be so thin that it wouldn't really matter. The rocket itself was actually inspired by an, by an old 50s, 60s design from Boeing, the LMLV, or something like that rocket, where it had a bunch of solid boosters surrounding a main fuselage that was huge. Unlike the rocket, however, it, it was just something that inspired me, but unlike the Boeing rocket, the middle part for me would just be pure straight-up cargo. 
and it would be surrounded by boosters. Now I know what you newer players are saying, use auto strut. Unfortunately, auto strut doesn't cover or doesn't attach to certain things too well. All of these wing panels that you see here are auto strutted, but without the added struts, the whole structure tends to wobble. It's just the nature of the beast. Auto strut is not a be all fix all. You're still gonna need the old fashioned struts for certain things. Write that down. I'm trying to teach you something here, gosh damn it. The entire thing made it into orbit and actually got it up there into a nice large orbit before separation. What little fuel was on the actual customized cargo bay was just to throw it out a little bit more so that it didn't take so much delta v to get to the moon. Now of course once in orbit I needed the rover to sort of be under its own power in order to make the trip to the moon and land. Now luckily enough underneath of the frame of this rover was a lot of space so I could build a type of landing mechanism, slide it underneath the rover, have it do all of the orbital maneuvers and landing sequences and once the entire rover landed the rover would was tall enough to where it could just drive away. I was very su 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 suspendedly, what? I was happily surprised to see just how well this thing was working. The suspension was holding up really well and it drove over all the obstacles with relative ease. So I thought that was pretty cool. I have not tried it on other surfaces of other moons and planets just yet, but that will be on my list of things to do. I'm actually thinking of doing a how-to video on SSTOs again. The one that came out months and months and months and months ago it needs a little revamping but anyway if you like this video please 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 leave a like for the youtube i'll go i'll go i'll go whoa 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 fuck algorithm and if you really 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 like this video consider subscribing i upload often mostly kerbal space program we also have a membership if you're interested if you join up you get cool little emojis and badges and stuff pretty cool check it out but anyway that's all the time i have for today with this kerbal space program video thank you so much for watching and thank you again for, for your love and support i hope you all had a wonderful christmas and a happy new year love you all from the bottom of my heart and i will see you all in the next video Bye for now. Bye-bye.